great, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that question. And uh, in our, throughout the supply chain, corporate social responsibility is absolutely one of the most critical things that we pay attention to. And, and we not only drive uh, corporate social responsibilities with Dell, we also drive through our supply chain. For example, we implemented a uh, CSR, corporate social responsibility program, with our supply base. We actually audit our suppliers on a quarterly basis and to make sure that on the green standard, electronic standard, uh, labor standard, that they meet the requirements. Now, we just start this journey, so we're not 100% there yet. So you're gonna see things you know, happen here and there, but we're committed to make sure that we drive corporate social responsibilities through our supply chain, and we're gonna need a lot of help from you guys to help us to get there. Thank you for the question. And you can also use your, okay, thanks. Please introduce yourself first. My name is Hoi Pariri from Indonesia. My question goes to Ms. Kim. Your uh, brave uh, uh, acquiring of uh, European uh, brand is something that uh, we need to salute. However, I have a question in that regard. What is the constraints, if any, you face uh, when you acquire uh, MCM, and what do you foresee in the future? Because there is a big uh, cultural gap between the West and uh, the East in particular. Thank you. I think this is quite a valid question, not only as a big company, but small company I own now acquired a global business company and the running global scale. Obviously, it requires like a multicultural, as you mentioned, also distance management. And, uh, and it's not just only language issue, not physical distance issue, time difference issue. I find it's a cultural language difference was the biggest obstacle because we have uh, 14 nationalities out of 600 employees, and it was not language, it's cultural language. But how we overcome is very interesting. It is a current, a certainly a team building, make one spirit under one umbrella, even though we are you know, living in very different cultural times and also different times and different in the physical environment. I think, I think a lot of this IT development out of the internet revolution, now virtual office is very valid. Therefore, me as a chairperson or owner, I take airplanes 65 to 70 times per year. I tell you, there's a lot of agony involved. But where I am is the headquarter. It doesn't mean you need a big building, whatever. As long as you're equipped, you know, you're a Blackberry or a computer, whatever, you can run global business without problem. So that's one thing I like to say. But secondly, it's really process management. It's now we are scaling up the business very quickly. Every year we experience more than 35% growth and also very much diversified markets. And so it's how we can really adjust the local business, which means not only globally run, but also localizing, not only distribution, and also how we can get into the, deep in the consumer market, which means CRM, how we can characterize it, how we can meet up their needs in terms of product development, you know, from color scheme society to everything is very intriguing, but very complicated also. So I think, but also CRM too, as I mentioned, is really enabled to, for us to do so. And also, as I mentioned, the process management is the most critical key because now we used to s s you know, produce, let's say, about 100,000 pieces. Now we are already 1.3 million pieces. Next year, we are already envisioning 2 million pieces coming from 50 different fa factories, three, four countries, how we are gonna manage. So we are now adapting SAP. We used to have Oracle, but anyway, now converting into SAP. And uh, well, I hope somebody is laughing, but, <laughs> but uh, it is now how we can uh, give the, this uh, small, medium-sized suppliers, because some they don't have IT, some they don't have even technology to, or money to adapt that, how we can help them and able to equip with the, you know, the uh, IT system, either from in our help, through the government, whatever, and also even some smaller suppliers can merge together to be our sourcing to adapt from all these um, uh, technology enhanced process management. So, I and also one more thing is this distribution channel. As you know, not only just opening boutique, which takes a lot of money and time 
involved, but are now B2C, B2B, special B2B business like e-commerce anchor, which is very, very uh, prosperous. In Korea, we are already running more than $40 million on online e-commerce, and we are lo really looking forward also um, in enlarging our market around the world like that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, the lady in blue. Thank you very much. My name is Elizabeth Benham, and I'm the International President for Business and Professional Women. And I would like to compliment the panel this morning for a great session. Um, I'm also very pleased to see four women on the panel there today, which is really wonderful. And uh, what's more important is that, is that you are real inspiration to SMEs. And uh, Sung Ying, uh, you are a great supporter of women's organizations. We see you all over the world, so I know you travel 65 times a, a year or whatever. Um, and from Dell, thank you so much, Ying and uh, Rose. The, um, thank you for your inspiration to the SMEs. That is a, a, a great support for us as well. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth, right? Thank you. Yes. Mike, please. I'm sorry, lady first, and then. <laughs> I'm sorry for dominating the stage. Uh, I'm Tatiana Palermo. Uh, my Italian surname also doesn't have anything to do with me, with my origin. I'm Russian in origin, and I live in Brazil for the last 10 years. And yeah, really international. And I'm responsible for international affairs of the Brazilian Trade and Investment Promotion Agency, Apex Brazil. Uh, I am also very pleased to see women here, successful, beautiful. Uh, what I wanted to ask you, uh, it will reflect a little bit your comment, Ms. Kim, about the country image and region image. Uh, for many years, we label the countries and uh, we and the whole regions uh, as poor as uh, uneducated and uh, misery, mi miserable countries sometimes. And it affects everything. It affects exports, investment attraction. And I know that Jackie, for example, is responsible for an a nation uh, brand project at ITC. So, and it's a very important topic for us at uh, our Ibero-American network of trade promotion agencies that unites uh, 22 countries, 22 trade promotion agencies. So it's uh, a question uh, basically to you, uh, where do you, do you concentrate your production? How does uh, made in China or made in uh, Korea affects you really in exports? And uh, the other question is uh, whether you produce abroad or you just use distribution chains and outsourcing abroad. Thank, Thank you. you. And I, I will make my reply very quick, very valid the question, especially on China. In fact, uh, we call that country origin issue, as I mentioned previously, that made in China, exactly the same quality, made in Italy, exactly sometimes worse quality, which consumer values most obviously made in Italy because of country branding was there. It matters such a big discrepancy there. But I think that the era is changing. Uh, for instance, you know, I don't know whether you read some newspaper a couple of weeks ago in, in China, I think it was China Daily, whatever, they had some big argumentative article saying, well, I wouldn't say that it's specific name, but GA brand from Italy. And they made a men's uh, suit $50 or $80 maximum. But going back to the Italy and came back, happened to be like $2,000. X factory cost only 50 or $80, arrived back, exact the same finished garment, 2000 Now, why is that? Even some now major brands, they start to make half made in China, bring it back to Italy and assemble it, come back with the made in Italy and make another 10 times, 20 times higher price what is supposed to be. Very big argumentative one. I think it is a lot to do with consumer perception. Yes, in past, when Western civilization really driving the lead of the whole global market, it was so. Even I remember when I was running the you know, your, uh, French brand, and they said, oh, we have to put on beautiful, gorgeous, blondie, blue eye, perfect beauty, and, 
and advertising then